entertained and to, and to raise the, the significant funds in support of the foundation, which in turn supports uh, LAPD, and so it was a, a wonderful evening. Uh, and another thing, I, I don't want to uh, preempt uh, either uh, the chief or our inspector general, but uh, you know the the incident with USC uh, has drawn quite a bit of uh, public attention, and we'd be interested in uh, hearing more about that. Uh, uh, I recognize not necessarily a report this morning because I'm aware that some meetings are taking place, but at some point in the not too distant future, I think we should. We should receive a report regarding that incident. Thank you. Yes. Uh, no. Thank you, President Norton. Um, I have the honor of attending the uh, police uh, memorial uh, service that was held here last Thursday. Uh, it was a moving uh, ceremony, and it was well attended by family members. It concluded over here on the side where we have our police memorial with a uh, flyover and bagpipes and uh, I believe a 21-gun salute. It was really a moving experience. I'd never attended one before, and I was very glad and honored to uh, have attended that one. And I also joined Commissioner Mack and, and our president, Commissioner Orton, at the True Blue event, and I was very glad. It was a very successful event, and uh, people got to interact with the department and see some of the things we do, and, and I think we raised some money. and. Like Commissioner Mack said, Paul Anka showed up, and he was really terrific. So it was a, a great thing honoring our former Commissioner uh, Rick Russo. Thank you. If there are no other comments, uh, we'll go uh, directly to a report from the Chief of Police. Good morning, Commissioners, and, and thanks uh, for your attendance at our, at our True Blue fundraiser. Over a million and a half dollars was raised for the foundation uh, goes to uh, not only our youth programs, but uh, multiple other gaps that occur in our budget over these tough times. It's, uh, I much appreciate uh, not only the commission's attendance, but also the, the hundreds of other uh, folks that were there and, uh, and got a chance to, to see a little bit about the Los Angeles Police Department through the displays, interact with our employees, and, and uh, donate money to uh, making L.A. a safer place. Uh, this past weekend, uh, uh, members of the Los Angeles Police Department responded to uh, citizens' complaints of an out-of-control party in the area of 23rd and Hoover. Uh, the officers uh, arrived at the scene, uh, made contact with uh, people that claimed to be the organizers or folks in charge of the parties, made requests that they uh, disperse and, and turn down the, uh, the music that was the source of the complaint. Uh, some individuals complied uh, uh, temporarily, uh, but then uh, the party re uh, reignited. Uh, people took to the streets. Uh, the police department issued a dispersal order. Some people failed to disperse. Uh, we made uh, nine arrests, I think, for various charges. Um, and that's the basic uh, undisputed fact pattern. Um, a couple of issues that, that I think need to be addressed. One is uh, we need to have uh, more open discussions with the students, and, and that has begun. We had meetings with a number of people that, uh, that represented the individuals involved yesterday, got a, a list of, uh, of issues that they would like to have addressed. Uh, on top among that list was uh, better communication with the police department. We absolutely agree with that. Uh, you know, had we been able to uh, uh, make uh, contact with the individuals before the party uh, spilled into the streets, we probably could have done a much better job of, uh, of uh, making sure that the police uh, weren't necessary. You know, obviously the Los Angeles Police Department uh, has many, many things it is tasked with. Uh, you know, we would prefer that, that people police their own uh, social events and that we not be involved in that. Uh, we're going to have uh, some more meetings today. Uh, trying to uh, establish um, communications and then also work with the Department of Public Safety and SC, uh, the SC uh, uh, police force, uh, to make them more involved in off-campus parties. Remember, uh, 23rd and Hoover is, is not, within their not within their normal patrol zone, uh, to my understanding. Um, it, it is a place that the Los Angeles Police Department uh, has sole responsibility for. But we want to make sure that, that DPS 
uh, works more closely with students to ensure that their social events don't intrude on the neighborhoods and and that uh, we aren't called there in the early morning hours to to deal with something that that uh, that, that should have been dealt with much earlier uh, setting parameters and, and performance uh, and behavior expectations that kind of thing so uh, what I what I would recommend is that uh, the commission uh, uh, watches. We work with the uh, with the students and with DPS on uh, instituting uh, protocols to make sure that uh, the communication is better prior to these events, uh, and that uh, our response, you know, is as uh, as appropriate as it possibly can be, and that uh, we report back to the commission. I can Chief Green is here right now, but but uh, after we've done. Uh, a few more of these meetings and, and uh, uh, seeing where we can we can best improve on both sides. Uh, we can come back to the commission and give a briefing on that. You know, I, I would uh, I would also add that uh, you know the the allegations that uh, somehow uh, this was a uh, incident where people were profiled because of their race. Uh, we will look into that. Uh, we will diligently examine whether that is true or not. But I would uh, put forward that in the vast majority of incidents, um, police officers are just responding to behavior, and it, it has nothing to do with uh, with the origin of, of the individual. Um, uh, but we will we will ensure that uh, all video is reviewed of this incident, and that uh, that we take a careful look at the behavior of our office officers to uh, make sure that it's as as good as it could be, and where it needs improvement, uh, we'll take action. Now, on to the uh, crime uh, section of my report, as, as is usual. This is, a, this is, excuse me, this is as of uh, the 4th of this month. Uh, homicides are down in the city 14.7%. As compared to last year, rapes are down 34%. Robberies down 12%. Aggravated assaults down 11%. Total violent crime down 12.7%. Uh, all categories, all the four categories of property crime uh, are down um, with a total aggregate uh, reduction of property crime of 5.9%. Um, total part one crime, that's the combination of the two obviously, is down 7.1%. Shots fired are down in the city, uh, victim shot down 15.4%. Gang-related crime, we're making uh, tremendous inroads, as, as you've heard, in the gang-related crime this year. Total reduction in gang-related crime is 20.9%. Uh, gang homicides down 28.1%. Um, truly uh, a, a, a very, very good start to the year. And as we uh, approach the halfway point, these numbers become uh, more and more intractable. So I, I expect us to have a absent... Uh, singular incidents that, that cause huge amount of numbers. I expect us to have a very good year this year. Sworn personnel on payroll, uh, in, including recruits in the academy, is 9,958. Uh, we will be making job offers to um, a new academy class in the next week, so we'll, we'll be adding to that before the end of the fiscal year. Uh, reserve officers, uh, 269 level 1s, 21 level 2s, 128 level threes. This reminds me to uh, to mention that Saturday was our reserve appreciation uh, uh, barbecue, which we had in front of uh, a police administration building. Thank you, Chief Hara, for for uh, putting that on and and uh, and helping us to to honor our reserves who, who do a tremendous job for the police department every day. Uh, specialist volunteers, we have 372. Uh, chaplain counselors, we have 34. Civilian personnel, uh, 2,838 with 509 uh, vacancies. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Chief. I, I also heard on the radio as I was coming in uh, about the exporting of, of our, our gang reduction programs uh, to, to Mexico and particularly to Juarez. Uh, you might wish to speak to that. We had uh, the mayor's office uh, sponsored a uh, symposium at the endowment center over the last couple of days. I believe it's going on today also. Uh, yesterday, Connie Rice and I spoke about the gang strategies and how they're implemented, how they were devised, what their origins are uh, in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, people, f uh, police officials, and and other others involved in uh, in gang intervention and prevention from El Salvador, from Honduras, uh, from uh, varying states in Mexico, 
as well as from the Southwest United States attended. Um, good discussion. You know, I, I, I'm very proud of what the LAPD does in, uh, in reducing gang crime, but I'm also very aware that we've had a, a lot of experience doing it the wrong way as well as the right way. And, you know, I think that, that people can learn from the history of Los Angeles and, and uh, hopefully by learning they don't have to repeat it. Um, you know, we have uh, made tremendous strides, but uh, we come from a, a long and, uh, and difficult uh, journey on that, on that. It's been a long road, but we're getting there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, report of the Executive Director. Good morning, Madam President, members of the Commission. Nothing to report today. Uh, report of the Inspector General. Thank you, Madam President, Commissioners. Uh, as the Chief mentioned, there was a meeting uh, yesterday regarding the end of semester party that happened near USC and LAPD's response. Uh, my staff and I attended that meeting. I think in attendance with the meeting were USC's Chief of Police, uh, Chief of Public Safety, uh, Chief Pacinger, Commander Blake, Captain Snell, uh, two senior lead officers and uh, several student advocates that were involved in uh, the incident. I found that the meeting was uh, in incredibly productive. All parties had sat down and, and hashed and out a lot of the issues and talked about steps going forward. And that being said, my office will monitor the uh, investigation uh, in, in the, into the incident and report back uh, to you uh, anything that we find uh, related to that incident. And we will work with the department to figure out uh, what those issues are and the lessons learned. Um, we believe uh, there's a meeting tonight uh, that uh, we've been told we approximately a thousand attendees. Uh, my staff and I will be attending that meeting as well. Thank you. Any comments? Uh, I now go to number five, which is our information and filed items. Uh, we have uh, six noise variance permits on file. More details are in the uh, agenda. Uh, the full agenda. We also have the special event permits on file uh, submitted as of uh, May 3rd, 2013, uh, which again you can hear, see, uh, and read more details uh, in the full agenda. And do we have presentations today? Uh, yes, Madam President, we have a presentation of the Police Commission Distinguished Service Medal, of which uh, you're going to uh, handle the presentation. Yes, I am. Uh, and I'm very pleased to do this. Uh, we do not uh, uh, have many opportunities uh, to uh, uh, grant the Police uh, Commission Distinguished Service Medal, and I'm particularly pleased to be able to uh, announce this one for Songhai Migoda Armstead. Uh, in 2006, the Los Angeles City Attorney's Office, in conjunction with the LAPD and several primary service providers in the Skid Row area, entered into an organized effort to address quality of life, crime, and public health issues. Assistant Supervising City Attorney Meguda Armstead was selected to direct the City Attorney's involvement in this collaboration. Thus was born the Central Area Safer Cities Initiative, with Songhai serving at the forefront of this partnership between the City Attorney's Office, and it's good to see so many high-ranking members of the City Attorney's Office here to, to join in this celebration, uh, and the task force uh, by the department. Together, these individuals were tasked with developing and implementing a system of enforcement, enhancement, and outreach that would focus on the reduction of crime and eliminating urban blight and decay. So High's involvement was the key to success in the majority of these efforts. Chief amongst the referrals has been the streets or SOS program, a collaboration with the LAPD and the city attorney's office, <coughs> Unique programs were designed, supported, implemented, prodded by Songhai to provide these types of life-changing services. The innovative and meticulous effort set forth by Songhai has resulted in breakthrough programs that not only include incredible community-based policing, but community-based government efforts. Songhai, I'm sure, would be the first to say there's very much more to do lots more to do, but 
Her efforts have been extraordinary, and we wanted to recognize them for her outstanding collaborative efforts, commitment, relentless perseverance in creating a safer community in Skid Row. It is with our pleasure and honor that you are to be awarded the Police Commission Distinguished Service Medal. And if you will come forward, we'll come uh, uh, to the podium and present the medal. First of all, thank you so much for this. This this is absolutely beautiful, and I feel very, very honored. Um, but the truth of the matter is that it doesn't really belong to me. It belongs to the community. It belongs to LAPD, tons of other people that I worked with in the office. This is, um, as you said, Andrea or Commissioner Orton, that this was a. It's a huge feat. It's it's not done. It, it, there's a lot of work to be done. It's um, on all all areas. There's there's so much work to be done just with the homeless, the mentally ill, and the subs people with addiction problems in general in the Los Angeles area. But um, none of this that we've accomplished, the, the job isn't done, and, and I definitely didn't do it um, on my own. So to the people who are present who participated and helped us with the work, um, thank you very much. And I hope that we continue to get our funds up so that we can do more work in the community as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you again. We have our uh, consent agenda items. Uh, uh, that's on 7A through think, uh, K. Uh, we have, uh, our, uh, would any of the commissioners uh, wish to pull any of the, uh, the reports? I move approval of 7A through K. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> it should be noted that uh, approved in the consent agenda includes some of the very donations uh, that uh, we do get from the Los Angeles Police Foundation, uh, which has just been a major, major source of uh, assistance. So we were very fortunate to have an enormous amount of volunteer support through our CPABs uh, and, and uh, from members of the business and, and uh, residential communities, but uh, the Police Foundation has uh, been <coughs> crucial in providing some of the services we need, and we have accepted with thanks some of those today. Uh, our regular agenda item. Uh, we will, of course, uh, uh, start in a moment after we go through the other m items with the uh, verbal presentation from the CPAB from Harbor today. Uh, we are uh, going to also have another verbal uh, presentation uh, from the Los Angeles uh, Superior, uh, from our department regarding the Los Angeles Superior Court's uh, funding uh, problems and, and what impact <coughs> they are uh, to us. Uh, we also uh, will be having the department's report in G on uh, the uh, audit uh, and also department's report, uh, the monthly report on the DNA 
report. And are there any others that we wish to see? No. If not, I'll entertain a motion. On the remaining no. items. Mo move approval of regular agenda items 8, D, E, F, and I. Second. And C. And, and uh, yes, and, and C. And yes. C. Yes. Second. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. They are approved. And now we'll immediately go to the first verbal presentation, which is from our Community Police Advisory Board, our CPAB, uh, regarding uh, the harbor area. Thank you again, so many of you, for attending. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, chief. Uh, my name is Nancy Lauer. I'm the commanding officer of Harbor Area of LAPD, and I have with me today our co-chair, Ms. Mona Sutton, and Catherine Plows, our community relations officer in charge. As a brief overview of Harbor Division, we have a population of approximately 175,000 community members. We are 27 square miles in size, include the largest uh, landmass in the South Bureau, are the entrance and the gateway to our beautiful Los Angeles Harbor, and include the communities of San Pedro, Wilmington, Harbor City, and Harbor Gateway. Mm -hmm. The first community project that we'll share with you is the San Pedro project, and Mona Sutton will share that with you. Wait for just a second, since you've given us this wonderful audio visual, uh, I right think we're having a little trouble getting it up on our own computers. Oh. Okay. There we go. Here it is. We have it. Which one is it? Thank you. Oh, the green. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I had it, and it's, and it's gone. We can turn around and look at it. Yes. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's not working. It's not working. We'll just. Uh, oh, there it goes. There it is. Oh, okay. It just doesn't okay. last. But it doesn't no. last. But, but we'll go ahead yeah, we'll and go ahead. we'll turn it's around too, if we need okay. to. Okay, so we'll start off. We're, we're going to uh, briefly discuss three projects that we feel were instrumental in reducing crime and improving the quality of life in the community, and we'll start with the San Pedro project. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Mona Sutton, Commissioners and Chief. Um, I want to say I'm so proud to be here. This is my seventh year um, representing as the community partner to Harbor Division. And I come here with great pride and enthusiasm that um, since I've been involved, um, there have been th um, three commands, um, beginning with um, Captain Joni McNamara, and then William Hayes, and now with um, Captain uh, Nancy Lauer. And I, I mention this because the command staff um, is so crucial in, in what they bring to the table to the community to keep people like me. I am a um, very busy business owner, and there are so many people in the community that want to see our overall quality of life continue to improve. We want to see uh, better education um, for their communities and their neighborhoods on um, how this organization works how they can help it work and be more effective um, in their own uh, section of the neighborhoods, and then ultimately um, how the partnership can continue to grow and, uh, and how those seeds that have been sown over so many great commands can continue on. And, and again, um, very exciting because the seeds are sown and now it's in fruition. And um, there's so many things besides, uh, besides this in San Pedro and the four corners of the harbor area that are going on that it's such a, 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 an amazing list. And I'm so proud of, our, um, of, of what these people do. And again, 
proud to be here to, to tell you a small portion of what's going on in San Pedro. Um, and this particular subject has to do with, um, with the skateboarding and the bombing issue. It has become um, a, a tremendous problem in our community. Um, we have um, several big high schools and a lot of teens in a, in a very, small, uh, uh, very small community in San Pedro. And we have a lot of hills, frankly, and a lot of tremendously great places for them to ride their skateboards and, um, and perform this type of activity. Unfortunately, um, with, the, um, the, with the lack of um, um, any LA codes talking about safety um, and, and dealing with specifically uh, with skateboarding and bombing, um, the need arised, arose because we've had two teens die in the last uh, year and a half, and we have had countless others that have not just been minorly injured, but seriously, seriously injured. And they come straight through into traffic, cross major thoroughfares, um, <coughs> encompass the sidewalks, and there has been an, uh, an outrageous outcry from the community to have change uh, happen. So the exciting thing is that um, with the partnership um, with LAPD, um, Councilman Joe Buscaino's office, there was a coordinated, uh, when the community support and the partnership um, led to create new legislation to keep kids and motorists safe in our community. Um, and that is, um, was put into, um, uh, back into law as, um, Code uh, 56.15.1, which is an amend amendment to the bicycle codes. So very exciting. And with that being said, you know, I personally was involved just after all uh, the last couple of years of all the hard work. I, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, before I knew I'd be reporting on this, on my way home from work, um, coming through a neighborhood, just in front of me, a young lady, a teenager, uh, came down a very steep hill. And I just happened to witness her stop dead, and she was at a very high rate of speed at this point. And she um, she hit face and head first, and uh, knocked her shoes off of her. It was very dramatic, and I knew she was seriously injured. And this was in a very quiet neighborhood. Got out of my vehicle, went to her, and she was literally um, uh, blood was uh, was gushing from uh, points of her uh, of her head, unknown, and. Uh, very dramatic, and so for somebody like me, so active in the community with trying to help um, help with safety and security and and get this f forward, thankfully um, paramedics arrived quickly. I was able to get them there and keep her calm, but she she did suffer a, a tremendous head trauma and on, on on an elevated incline there was for a community member to see this and having blood running down uh, it's unbelievable, so I want to say. Uh, great work uh, for the community to have pushed, great work for LAPD, and a tremendous effort to get this law in the books. And, and now I know that we'll be pushing forward um, with um, task force and with um, these folks taking care of uh, this part of uh, safety for, for the community. So happy to be here and um, once, once again for one more year. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent so thank work. you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, Victor Medina, who is our executive board member, could not be here today. He's actually in Washington seeking funding for our neighborhood councils. And the problem area up in the gateway that our CPAB was working on in 2012 was the high concentration of sex offenders in a very small pocket area up in the gateway. So those CPAB members that are from the Gateway got together with their senior lead officer, Brian Cook, and decided that enforcement wasn't the only way out of this. How can we better serve the community in getting these sex offenders out of the area? So one of the caveats to uh, probation and parole is that there cannot be a park within a certain amount of feet of where children reside. So through the hard work of Brian Cook and the entire folk folks up in the gateway. They started raising money. They used some Prop K funds. And in, I believe it was 
early February. They did a groundbreaking right at the corner of Del Amo and Denker. It's a small little pocket park. We broke ground that day, and it's going to open in June of this year. But it was a true collaboration between, like I said, our CPAB, the LAPD, Council District 15. Uh, the invitations, I'm sure, will be in the mail to you. But it has solved the problem temporarily. It is also an issue, an issue that we are addressing with probation and parole. We did reach some agreement with them that they would not send as many sex offenders to that particular area. However, with the uh, placement of this park, I think at least for the moment, the Harbor Gateway uh, will be a safer place. We're now moving forward with our Wilmington folks to develop another park in that area. So he was sorry that he couldn't be here, but he wanted to make sure that we shared that information with you today. Thank you, that's an excellent project, obviously. That's excellent. And we will wrap up with our last project. And on this one, I want to acknowledge the commanding officer of Robbery Homicide Division, uh, Billy Hayes, who is with us today, because he really kicked this off and it's come to fruition in a big way. And that's the Wilmington Project in 2012, Harbor area experienced in the first couple of months eight homicides in the Wilmington area and those flowed from a gang war between two rival factions in that area. As a result of that, uh, with, with Captain Hayes's leadership at that time of the year and with our Spanish CPAB, community members got together and they began some community marches and they wore this t-shirt and we have this as a token of our appreciation to the police commission for you all today but they began they began wearing these t-shirts and they began marching and each wednesday night community members got together with the support of the police department uh, these marches eventually climbed to 200 to 300 in size a number were covered by the media the result were, was, and in partnership with, because we certainly increased our enforcement and our strategies in those areas, um, in 2011 we had 31 homicides, in 2012, 19 homicides for a 38% reduction in homicides, and this year to date we have a 60% reduction in homicides. So this community partnership, we feel, has really made a tremendous impact in Wilmington and certainly overall in the harbor community. Um, in 2013, we have four key areas that we will partner with the CPAB and the community in focusing on, and those are our cyber bot captain program, expanding the use and outreach of our Facebook and social media, increasing emergency preparedness among our community members, and increasing the breadth and the size of our juvenile outreach and youth programs. And so, in closing, if you would, at this point, take a look at the, at the screen. Breakfast at the omelet and waffle shop, $10. These are landmarks in the harbor. A tour of the USS Iowa, $20. A San Pedro Harbor cruise, $40. And 2012 harbor crime rates lowest in 50 years, priceless. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We, uh, Commissioner, if I could just highly recommend the omelet and waffle shop. I think <laughs> I think you'd find the uh, the ownership there uh, very very uh, accommodating to the police department. <laughs> well, it, it, it is a very impressive presentation, and we thank you very much. The targeted nature of your goals are quite extraordinary, and the idea of being able to show your fulfillment of those goals is also uh, extraordinary and very much appreciated. Excuse me, Madam President, we have one comment card on this item. We have Mr. Daniel Jones. No, you, you go there, sir. <laughs> Good morning. Where's the captain at? Can I ask her a question? No. No. Okay. How long? You, okay. How many coordinated uh, uh, drug raids with the United States Customs Service have you had this year, ma'am? Hmm? Well, I know since 1986, the free press over there reports every single one of them. 
with the cooperation of this local, state, federal cooperation. My question to you, Captain, is who gave you permission to do a one-year investigation letting all those drugs coming off those boats, infiltrating our community, knowing it? across this country. It might be a help of the lower the crime rate for drug gangs, wouldn't it? They didn't, well, were fed the drugs to begin with, right? I can provide testimony to the fact I was putting every single computer wire for the Pacific region of the United States. There isn't one human being that can legally come into our region without crossing one of my wires. For the U.S. Customs Service Tech One computer network. I had a new escort badge for five years for the Department of Justice. They trusted me. I spent nine months with those people. How many billions of dollars, how many booking numbers? Knowing those drugs came off those ship and following the money right straight to Mexico. It's not a drug war over there. It's a civil war. Civilians are fighting over drugs in that country. I'm finished. I can meet you outside so that the feeling can continue. And that is the final comment card, ma'am. <coughs> oh, it's n now the uh, department's uh, verbal report and discussion uh, related to uh, the impact on the department uh, and justice system uh, with the budget cuts to the courts. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Captain Kelly Moldorfer. I'm the commanding officer, detective support and vice division. Uh, and within my command, uh, we also um, have court liaison detail. So we're going to discuss, get kind of a brief update as to the um, superior court reassignments uh, that are going to take place on June 3rd. I have with me Lieutenant George Bush, who's the uh, officer in charge of the court section. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, um, <coughs> It really involves uh, effective June 3rd. Uh, there'll be some changes in the San Pedro Court, the West LA Courthouse, and the Central Arraignment Court. Uh, in San Pedro, the change is going to be that traffic and non-traffic sites will now be um, funneled to the Long Beach Courthouse. In the West LA Courthouse, same thing, traffic and non-traffic sites will now be sent to Beverly Hills Courthouse. And uh, the West LA Courthouse is still going to be open for civil cases, some cr criminal cases uh, still yet to be determined by the Superior Court. They haven't quite decided how, what functions are going to remain there. So I guess the point I'm making is the courthouses aren't closing, they're just redistributing the work so it's more effective and leaner for the courts. And in the Central Arraignment Court uh, on Boucher Street, um, all direct file and RFC misdemeanors will now go to East LA. And all non-traffic citations, uh, infractions, will be sent to the Metro Courthouse down on 1945 South Hill Street. Um, all the divisions within the uh, police department that are affected by this uh, Central Bureau, South Bureau, parts of um, Operations West Bureau. Valley Bureau is not impacted at all by any of these uh, reassignments. And some of the strategies that uh, we've developed to uh, help uh, through this process um, involve notifying the records. There's going to be some changes in the divisions in terms of where the uh, records clerks need to send the reports. So we will be sending out a notice and contacting all the records units. We're trying to formulate that now as we they start to finalize all of these uh, changes. We'll be posting a land notice for the department uh, talking about some of these changes. And we'll also be distributing a detective bureau notice department-wide saying essentially what the land notice says, that there will be these changes. And, um, and then we also have our personnel from the court section attending roll calls in the affected divisions talking about what these changes mean. Basically, what the, for, for us, for the Los Angeles Police Department, 
It's, uh, it's more of an issue of confusion. There's no significant um, financial impact to any of this. <coughs> it's really going to be more of uh, making sure that our folks know where they're to report. And it's going to be important now that they read their subpoenas. <laughs> if, they're, if they're used to attending one court when they write a ticket, they will possibly be going to a different court. So that's really the message that we'll be sending out, is make sure that you pay attention to your subpoenas and, and that you take a look at the the information that's posted on the land and where you need to report and and so on and so forth and uh and then on the uh, side of the superior court they have already faxed a notice of all their changes it's much more detailed they have faxed that to all of the local law, en law enforcement a uh, agencies in the county and all of the lapd uh, divisions so each division already has what the court is proposing and also they'll soon have our um our version of it as well and, and how it, that's going to impact the department. Are you uh, contemplating or uh, expecting additional delays because of uh, pushing so much into uh, uh, fewer courtrooms or do you think it will be more officer time? Lieutenant Bush? I would think so, ma'am. I, it's hard to believe that it would not. It, yes, I think there, first of all, we're, initially there will be some issues of confusion, who's supposed to be where, maybe some people not showing up at the right places, and, and until they get their system set up, yes, um, I believe there, there could be delays. Uh, one of the things that the courts are doing, though, is they're trying to open up um, um, window payment windows to make it easier for people for the uh, community to come in and pay their fines and expedite that piece of it so you know that might relieve some of the court um, clogging <laughs> uh, I've read a great deal about the closing of the uh, juvenile justice uh, courts and uh, center uh, will that have any particular impact to, to your knowledge of as far as we can tell, ma'am, um, there shouldn't be any significant impact with regard to juveniles. Uh, it's just that um, the matters will be heard at uh, different locations. Obviously, for the public, I think, and for the people who have to appear as witnesses, you know, there will be a fairly significant impact. But you're saying, at least for the department, that you don't expect that much difference. Uh, there should not be. Uh, the, the only thing I think that, that we're going to experience is, is delays, and that's because they've reduced the number of judges, the number of courtrooms, and um, there's just less there as far as the, um, the court system goes. And especially if our officers have to be witnesses and they are getting those delays and continuances, uh, uh, we will see an impact, it certainly seems to me. Yes, that's quite possible, and that's one of the things that we're um, looking looking forward. We're going to be monitoring that and, and try to make adjustments or recommendations um, to minimize the amount of time that our officers have to spend in court or, or you know, the impact of the delays on, on our officers. So we'll be taking a look at that as, as this unfolds. Um, I think we anticipate it, but we kind of have to wait and see. Right. But we are aware of that, yes. And, and I would anticipate then if, if we keep good records of that, that might be helpful in uh, obtaining additional funding as budgets uh, relax somewhat uh, for the state of California. Absolutely. Yeah. Any questions? All right, well, thank you very much. And uh, look forward uh, maybe in about three months or so to uh, see uh, what uh, concrete differences, if any, uh, have occurred. Very good. We will monitor it very closely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll uh, now go to uh, the department's uh, report uh, on G, the Central Bureau of Vice Command uh, Audit. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lieutenant Cheryl Brada. I work at uh, Internal Audits and Inspections Division. And this is uh, Detective Jose Ceja. He's the uh, assistant in charge. Today we're here to present the Operation Central Bureau Vice Command Accountability Performance Audit. 
Internal Audits and Inspection Division developed command accountability performance audits, also known as CAPAs, to address risk management issues, assess operations, and provide timely information to department management. This CAPA is the first in a series of quarterly bureau vice CAPAs to be performed department-wide. Prior to conducting the audit, I met with staff of the IG's office to go over the objectives, and they agreed with the objectives. This audit includes the evaluation primarily of vice investigations related to disrobing during vice uh, investigations. We also looked at arrest reports, search Ramey warrant packages, adult juvenile detention logs, consistency of information, and that's making sure information in all reports is consistent, standards-based assessments, and evaluation of supervisors' roles. Uh, the time period reviewed was June 17th through August 11th, uh, 2012. That would be deployment period 7 and 8, 2012. The audit revealed substantial compliance with the objectives. Minor discrepancies were noted in two areas, and that would be consistency of information. We had a 91% uh, compliance. We had also uh, discrepancies in standard-based assessments, and that would be 60% compliance. The findings were presented to the Commanding Officer and Assistant Commanding Officer Operations Central Bureau and the Assistant to the Director, Office of Operations, who were in general agreement with the results. The discrepancies identified were investigated and corrective measures were taken. And, and perhaps even before we go to the corrective uh, measures, if you can explain to us uh, the, the objective number four, the uh, completion of standards-based assessments. Yes. That uh, particular objective... Uh, what we were looking at was that the SBAs were completed for the current rating period, that the SBAs were signed by the employee, all supervisors, and the commanding officer, that the SBA reflected a uh, risk management information system action item number, and that the action item was closed within the 90 calendar days of the date issued. Uh, we had a total of 40 employees. Uh, we looked at um, each employee's uh, personnel package to make sure they had a standards-based assessment present, and then we evaluated uh, to ensure it was uh, in compliance with the objectives. Any comments at the moment? Well, then we'll no, go to the department. Matt, be interested in hearing Commander Sherman. Yes, good morning. Uh, Commander John Sherman, Operations Central Bureau. Um, uh, as uh, um, uh, Cheryl mentioned we, we were, in general, very pleased with the audit. We think uh, it was a very good audit. The one area um, uh, that did uh, cause attention for both Chief Perez and I was a standard-based assessments. Um, we have uh, taken a real close look at that, both within the vice units uh, and within our GIT component within the Bureau, and then also from a gl more global pr perspective within the entire Bureau and, and all the employees. Um, we've audited uh, command officers and civilian employees within the last year, and then this year's audit schedule um, calls for an inspection of all, all other employees. The, uh, the discrepancies that were identified in this audit were, were varied from not having a, a, an action item number typed in there or having the number typed in wrong to, being, to missing the 90-day the, the due date uh, with uh, the timeliness of it being the most significant component within the audit. Um, we've addressed that with uh, all of the vice units in December. Um, our vice coordinator has put this on, on um, her uh, attention list and discussed it with the vice supervisors. Um, and then Chief Perez and I have discussed it with, with our command officers and continue to give the command emphasis uh, to try to increase the improve the <coughs> timeliness aspect of it. And we'll continue to do that. And the audit that we're doing of the entire command um, um, this year will also address the, uh, that issue and look at that from, a, from an overall bureau perspective. Okay. Overall, good. An excellent report, yeah. right, and uh, good after action as well. I, I would also like to add that uh, Lieutenant Cindy Bennett did an excellent job. She uh, is on top of on on top of her divisions and of the vice units. She did a great job. She's the bureau vice coordinator for Central Bureau. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Move approval of regular agenda item eight G. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. 
And with that, I think we go to public comment. No, no, no. no, no. H. H. Oh, I just, yeah, there it is. The uh, report on uh, the DNA. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here. Here. Good morning. Are Commissioners, how are you doing? This I have with me James Blocker, a detective from Robbery Homicide Division, as well as Harry Klan, a supervising criminalist from the Serology DNA Unit uh, from SID. Um, if you take a look at our report that has been submitted, I think the most significant thing that you can see is that there is no backlog listed for this period, which was the goal of it. And you can also see a, one of the significant issues is that the outsourcing is decreasing with more internal processing. Uh, a gr good portion of that is the result of the work they're doing and then the grant funding that's assisting some of that. Um, the one thing that um, isn't on the report that I would like to comment on, and if you'll indulge me for a moment, uh, anecdotally is the, um, the work that SISD has done. Um, as you're familiar with, in, on March 27th, we had a 10-year-old girl kidnapped from her residence in Northridge and sexually assaulted by a 30-year-old male. Um, uh, that girl wasn't recovered until late that afternoon. She was taken early morning hours, and then she was recovered late afternoon, which began an intensive investigation. Um, at the onset of this investigation being there, um, it was strictly a whodunit. We had absolutely no clue, um, and because of the trauma that the girl had experienced, there was difficulty in gaining information in, in, in the initial stages. Um, but what we did have were some crime scenes that uh, she had indicated where her assaults had occurred. Or, um, the criminalist from SID came out um, and did an extremely thorough job processing and collecting evidence from those things, scenes, um, and we continued to work together or throughout the night. I got a hold of uh, Yvette Burney, the commanding officer of SID, and worked with her, and her SID criminalist worked through the entire weekend and to process those uh, that evidence, including the serology and DNA, and by Monday morning, and had identified an, a CODIS profile that was uploadable for us. As um, we had developed information throughout the course of the investigation, and that identified the su suspect from other information, but it. I think it's really important that you know the work that they did in coming in. They worked through the entire weekend, 24 hours a day, as well as we did, at uh, getting that information and then having a CODIS upload that we could enter into D DOJ to confirm the profile of the suspect. Um, I think that has changed drastically over the years, and obviously is a testament to the work they're doing, being able to do something along that line, plus maintain a zero backlog. So um, it's not something you hear or you see a lot of paperwork coming across your desk, and I want wanted you to know the work that they do from a perspective of a commanding officer working with them. So I just wanted to bring that up for you as well. Very, very much appreciate that. Uh, uh, we, we tend to look at sometimes at these reports and they're, they're just numbers. We're pleased that the backlog's down. We know that that's important, but it's much more important when you hear a story like that, that it, it, the system is truly working and uh, the cooperation uh, enormous cooperation of SID to, to get this to happen. And so we really appreciate your bringing it to our attention. Thank you. SID and also uh, subsequently the excellent work of the uh, Robert Homicide in the department in apprehending particularly that second suspect. He was the main culprit in it. The uh, first individual that we got at early on was just a, a driver, but the other one. Um, so, but again, it was grateful. We were very grateful for the work they did. You know, uh, just as a comment, Commissioners, there's a tremendous discussion uh, nationwide about whether or not the lab should be independent from the detective function. Uh, that's the that's the big discussion. Uh, and I think that what uh, uh, Captain Hayes talks about here and what you see day to day in the way that robbery, homicide, and our detectives work seamlessly with SID absolutely proves that at least in this city, it would make no sense to separate them. SID is under Detective Bureau. Um, it, it, it was put there for, to a, for a reason to enhance the cooperation and to and to add the, the detective's ability to prioritize with SID's ability to analyze. And it, so it's just become a, a great relationship that I'm really proud of. And and I wanted to bring it up because you may hear. Uh, and then and uh, some places want to go to state labs or they want to make sure that the labs are independent of the police department. 
And what Billy talked about on that on that kidnap rape would have never happened if they were independent. Never. And it just it, to me, it just drives home the um, the department's uh, structure. Uh, Madam President, if I may, uh, at the last Public Safety Committee meeting, uh, the Chair of Public Safety Council Member Englander indicated to the Department that the monthly reports for DNA backlog would no longer be necessary unless there becomes a greater than 5% backlog. So the Department will not be generating reports anymore unless there is a 5% backlog or greater. So it takes some of the paperwork off of the Department, but also I think it's a recognition by the Council that the good work the Department has done that uh, Captain Hayes and SID spoke about. Thank you. Excellent news. And, and uh, also on the prior agenda item, uh, Captain Hayes, uh, congratulations on all the great work that uh, you did in, uh, Harbor. in Harbor. Thank you very much. It was an enjoyable assignment. You're the hero of the, of the day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank all three of you very, very much. Thank you very much. And all the people uh, behind the scenes. Thank you. And now I think it's time for public comment. Well, Madam President, move approval of the report and transmission to the City Council. <laughs> I Second. really want to get to public comment. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approved. Okay. We, and now it's public comment. Okay, we have three cards. We have um, Karen, followed by Pete Nichols, Nicholas, and then Dan Jones. All right. Good morning. Uh, my name is Karen, and I'm on Channel 36. I serve the community by um, putting rock bands on TV, asking them stupid questions, announcing them. And it gets kids off the street, but that's not why I showed up today. Um, I used to be the girlfriend of uh, the chief detective, Freddie Otash, um, who passed away. And he told me that these charges against me um, were misjudging. Um, and um, they were behavioral charges. And Peter Wong, who works in the permit licensing department, told me that, um, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of confused, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a massage therapy license and these charges. Um, like a, some detectives are telling me, that I have to come up with the 300 hours first, and then um, they're going to review the cases. I'm trying to do it the other way around to get a city practitioner's permit, and I desperately need a referral. And I'm wondering if somebody here could help me with that. Uh, Madam President, she can speak to Lieutenant Chris Waters in the back. She's raising her hand, ma'am, right there. This, this is under the purview of the Police Permit Review Panel, and that would be the entity that uh, would actually hear any appeal to a denial. Lieutenant Waters can help you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Pete Nicholas. Uh, Madam President, my prepared remarks run about 10 seconds late. I respectfully request an extra 15 seconds on the clock. Uh, we'll accept uh, your prepared remarks. Uh, and uh, we'll hold to the two minutes, but thank you. LAPD's Metro Division, moving into the repurposed old Rampart Station, can directly contribute to improving the lives of Rampart Village children, and without making a financial or operational sacrifice of any kind. You and LAPD should do so by including open green grass space for children and families on the south edge of the plot along High End Street, beyond any paved space and existing pillars supporting the upper level of parking. Our community has always lacked a single square inch of grassy public park space. For half a century, the old Rampart plot has had a ribbon of empty, unused, fallow land on the western edge between the station's paved space and the two adjacent private properties to the west. That unused space may originally have been a primitive sound, smell, or sightline barrier, or a long abandoned former alley. Whatever the case, it is there and available for use now. Metro can easily be a friendly new neighbor in Rampart Village, or it can be a cold imperial occupier of community space, neither contributing to nor being a part of our neighborhood. As previously reported, our community opposes changing the traffic patterns into and out of Old Rampart. 
which would take traffic from principal thoroughfare Temple Street and dump it onto smaller and residential Benton Way. And a planned new secondary driveway on High End Street would take away the area for green grass. Metro refuses to re-engineer the Temple Street driveway, adjusting it westward into the currently unused space. And Metro continues to plan for only a much smaller mini park bordered by the driveway and busy Temple Street. Our kids deserve some green play space. Please use your monitoring and supervision influence to cause Metro and LAPD to change its plans, still maintaining current traffic patterns and utilizing currently empty, unused space so that kids can have a bit of green grass on the southern border. Thank you. Thank Think you. of your grandchildren were they in similar situations. And Madam President, that is the final speaker card. Uh, we will now uh, adjourn uh, to closed session to uh, discuss the public employee uh, performance evaluation discipline dismissal release category. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item numbers 10A and B in accordance with various government codes. Part of why I don't Sergio and Pacoima, you are watching LA City View 35, our city, our channel. Welcome to Connie Martin's and Talks Books. Depression, recession, loss of jobs, outsourcing. Have you been hit by it? And have you found yourself saying, now what? Well, my guest today, Mike Rose, is professor of graduate education at UCLA. He has written a book that is so important for anyone who can say, yes, I have been hit by recession, depression, all of the above, because the book is called Back to School, Why Everyone Deserves a Second Chance at Education, an argument